This is the introduction to the second of the bladed weapons, which is the butterfly knife. You also heard them referred to as butterfly swords. This is incorrect here because they come under the technical classification from here of the knife. More important than any of the other weapons is the weight and the balance of the particular sword you're using and things like this. What I want to point out now is the type of butterfly knives I do not want you to get. They're basically just made of pressed steel, things like this. They, for all appearances, have the appearance of what a butterfly knife should have. Unfortunately, the weight and the balance is, is completely off. As I let this come forward from here and drop it, notice that from here without any move motion from here, the balance is so bad that all of the weight is completely forward. So when you're doing any of these movements, you're getting extra force going against the elbow, which you don't want, and then it's hard to reverse the movements from here. Also, these butterfly knives are a little bit long. From a technical standpoint, the butterfly knife should come approximately to your elbow because when we use the tight rolling movements to the inside, if you don't, you're going to catch your arm and things like this. Once again, these are great for decorations. They're not ones you want. The ones will be shorter. They'll generally be made of aluminum. They'll have more taper to them. This one, of course, has the complete tang. The particular butterfly knives that I'm going to use now are custom made. Like I say, more so than any other set of bladed weapons you'll ever use, you almost have to have your butterfly knives personalized to your own weight, balance, and feel. The first of the katas with the butterfly knife is called butterfly wings. And what it does, it incorporates all the swinging circular movements you have. At the end of this, I will give a slight breakdown of some of the applications, but most of the movements are going to be self-explanatory as you're using two weapons. One is blocking, the other is striking, the other is striking, the other is blocking. From a standpoint of a weapon being able to be concealed, from here, and effective, it's a butterfly knives. Traditionally, now, the butterfly knives are made in a mat set so that the handles actually fit together from here so that the inside of the knives from here were smooth and fit against one another. They were carried in the sheath, and the expression butterfly knife comes, the movements would be done with the singles, then they would open, and there is your classic butterfly wings from here and that is movement, and that is where the name the butterfly comes from. What I'm going to do on this particular one now is show you the individual movements we'll use, and these same movements are used in the kata. The best way to teach this is to give, perhaps on each of the private lessons, give one of these particular circular butterfly type of movements to the student, give him a chance to learn it, then put them in the kata. The basic movement from here, the most common movement from here are what we call the figure eights. And the figure eights are done in two directions. They're done horizontally, or more often, they're done up and down. The easiest way to start this off is start generally with a power hand and just have the student work in a figure eight. Then switch to the left hand. The incorporation then is made. Also what happens, it wouldn't hurt on this particular one you have the student work out of a horse. Okay. Because of the movement, the continuous movement that we'll be having in more advanced sets, things like this, the one thing that's not used with working butterfly are low solid stances. Also, the butterfly knives, as a general rule, are a weapon used most common in southern China. So the first movement is the figure eights, the singles are then put together. That is a basic movement. Okay. From this basic movement, then, we take all the variations. They can come up and cut across at an angle. They can cut back. The first movement we're going to take as a variation off of this is our cutting and blocking movement. Use the right hand. Notice that the left hand blocks in this case. One is it cuts all the way across. Notice it comes back now. It becomes the blocking. Later on, you'll learn to block with the back side 
from here. But what's more important, you're at least making the block. So you're moving from here, but cut. Is it blocks? The other hand cuts. Is it blocks? The other hand cuts. The next movement are what we call the double movements from here, or the classic butterfly movements. Notice that they come together. Notice as they come across, at that point, there is what we consider the classic butterfly cutting movement. The block becomes a strike, the strike becomes a block. When you take a look at it, you can't tell which of the movements is which. So what we've had now are the single and the double figure eights. We've had the single cut. We've had the single cut and we have the double cut and block from here. The next movement that I'm going to teach you is without a doubt absolutely the hardest of all of these. What I'm probably going to have to do at this point is put them in a slow motion and freeze frame to get them for you. It's what we call delayed butterfly wing where you tuck one under the other. Notice my class I figure eight. One, two, one, two. But what we're going to do on this one now is I come over from here. Notice that I let, in this particular case, the left hand come under. One, two. Now as it comes under, it delays and goes to the other side. One, two, it comes under and is held in there. This comes under. It has to come over far enough to clear the other side. Then it comes under and lays under. This one comes high. They're laid under. The one hand is delayed. The one hand is delayed. Look, I can do as many cuts as I want on this one, but as it comes over, then it lays under as many cuts as I want, then it's laid under. Generally, it's done with only a single cutting motion.
The next movement we have are what we call the tight rolling movements where really they're simply done around the wrist. What they are basically, they're figure eights. But notice, the figure eights work on a very tight type of movement. Notice that they're each making a figure eight within themselves and they're kept very, very tight. You can open them up if you want, but classically, the two figure eights work within one another. The next set of wings that we have from here is a reversal of the movement. Rather than the figure eights coming down, the figure eights cut up. Okay. Basically then, we have each of these individual movements from here put together in a very short kata. The kata is very simple in fact that it simply works in a box. You step forward, you step back, you step forward, and you step back. On each of these particular movements now, we're going to take a series of butterfly wings, and on the final movement as we come forward, we put all the elements together. Your basic movement then, from here, the kata, from here, butterfly wings. Come out, basic movement from here. Sometimes you'll see it done with a formal salutation. I will give you the formal salutation. This is the hide the hand from here also, so I can make the transition together. As I come out from here, I present the knives at an angle, the hand is to here. As I come forward, the hand, from here, two fingers, touches the top knife. As I come back, the right hand grabs the top one, the left hand grabs the left one, so that what I'm doing in this particular movement, I'm hiding the movement, the transition, that I'm actually grabbing the butterfly knives. Notice, the knives are held with a back to your arm, not the blade. The formal salutation, one, two. As I step back from here, I make the transition. I'm going to step out now. As I do, I go into the first of the horizontal figure eights. Right, left, right. Then it transfers to the left. Then the two come together and they transfer from a horizontal from here to the vertical. Notice at this point now, I'm going to step up, and here we go into the second movement, which is our delayed wings with the hand under. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. At this point now, I'm going to step back with the left foot as I do. I go into the tight wings. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. At this point now, as I step forward with the right foot from here, we go into the uppercut figure eights. One, two, one, two. At the top of this movement from here, I step back to the left and we go in to the figure eights. And the kata now, at this point we come out, here is the first of my singles. Single, single, single. Now as we come back, we go into the double cuts. Double, double, double. Okay. From here as I come back now, we go into our delayed motion. Then from here we roll to our tight figure eights. From here, we transfer automatically into our rolling uppercuts. At this position now, notice I pivot the body, we go back to the figure eight, the figure eight, the figure eight. From here, we come over on the figure eight, I step out with a cut, draw back to position, we're right back from here to our formal salutation. Once again, butterfly wings.